thank you. <laughs> Hi all. So um, today I'm going to cover the cyber threat landscape is after your account. Um, how to protect yourself because that's going to be a takeover um, on that presentation, and this is ideally to be reshared. Um, first of all, uh, all around the world uh, there are attack going on all the time. This is a screenshot of the DTAC um, present uh, DTAC live radar of botnet attack. So you got uh, all the time, all over the world, continuous attack and botnet involved in a hacking network. So who are actually uh, doing these attacks? First of all, we get the script kiddies, uh, which are basically uh, starters that find script online and run it against systems. And they don't really know what they do, but they try it. And this is still a, a one of the type of the attacks. Then you got criminals, um, hacker, hackers uh, with bad attention. They want to take over your system, steal data. You got more organized crime with transnational criminal organization. These are like literally criminal enterprise, uh, which are usually behind the big botnet and run some more activities. And then you got the state backed hackers, uh, which are more uh, on a political agenda, trying to put pressure on states or uh, other countries and the foreign, foreign countries or enemies. This is like the cyber war. How do they do that? And I'm, I'm speeding up a little bit because we are kind of late, so <laughs> I'm going to catch up. Um, they target you with spam and scam, with the CEO fraud, sending emails, sign out that look like your CEO. You see that they, they target your accountant, try to get wire transfer and steal money this way. Uh, they try to get you with viruses, polymorphic viruses in memory. This is existing for a long time, and this is a very effective uh, approach. Uh, hacking directly to your, on your system is kind of the red teaming, but illegal one. So they want to break into, take control of your of your networks. Social engineering, uh, this is usually, usually a more targeted attack because it requires some investigation, data gathering uh, over the people to get uh, successful social engineering. But this is usually very efficient. Uh, we get password spraying, password stuffing. Uh, basically, password spraying, you get a database full of password and uh, they try this against your account, your, your email, trying all, all the um, password they can, or password stuffing, which is basically reusing a uh, password that were leaking before. And uh, believe it or not, but most of the security guys know that, but there are tons of credentials out there. I'm gonna show you a little example right there. I did quickly search on a Fesbin, one of the <laughs> favorite uh, dropping place, where you can find in a one search email accounts and associated passwords. Sometimes they are outdated, sometimes they are accurate. But the criminal group does do not care. They take these lists, this is automated attack, they use a lot of automation for that, and they just go, 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 go. So if you end up being there because you are the presenter. presenter. In an account, uh, yeah, that will be. That was not me. That was a ghost in the system. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, uh, why and what for uh, they do run after your accounts? The first key stuff is the money, and we saw the presentation before from Nicole Hoffman that actually spoke about the fraud detection in finance. So it all starts as well with credential stuffing, stealing your credit account, uh, credit account uh, bank password, and uh, to get a uh, wire transfer and get your money out of this. They want firepower for their botnets. Corrupting your machines and subscribing it to a botnet allow them to get firepower to target big businesses and uh, do DDoS attack, distributed uh, denial of service attack, which can bring your website down and stop your business online. And this is very damageable if you have an online selling site and stuff like that. Uh, stealing identities, that's a big stuff. Um, stealing identity for uh, reselling your identity, fake passport, fake credit, running scams. Uh, I live in Montreal, and there are a lot of, before the COVID stuff, 
um, real estate transaction where um, at least 3% of the transaction were attempted with fake identities. So this is crazy. Like one of the common scam, uh, someone applied for credit under your name or try to sell your own home while you're on vacation under your name and take the down payment and disappear with it. This is one of the scheme that runs. Uh, State-backed hackers, uh, this is either uh, destructive attacks like to uh, trigger disruption on the power grid or industrial systems or for counterintelligence, information gathering, stealing IP, intellectual properties and uh, getting more information. Um, political pressure and manipulation, this is part of the political game. We saw that in the previous election, this is another topic covered in the presentation as well, um, where uh, all the information gathering can be used against opponents. Let me get there. So crime, organ crime organization, Crime Inc. Uh, this is a statistic for, uh, from uh, 2015 from the book uh, Future Crimes. Um, it shows that prosecution is less than one and in 1,000 1, cases of 1% 1 of the cases. So that means that the criminal organization is actually a big business and it's not about to stop anytime soon. Someone else in the presentation spoke about the fact that cybersecurity is not about to stop anytime soon. Well, this is right, given uh, the small percentage of criminals that get arrested following attacks. And this is still in, the, in uh, 2015, um, $2 trillion in revenue from organized crime. So this is 15 to 20 percent of the world GDP. So that's very, very big. So in all of this, how to protect yourself? A couple of points uh, that I'm going to cover in detail in the next uh, slide. Uh, don't overshare on, my, on social media. Use different passwords on each, on each service. Use a password manager. Enable multi-factor authentication everywhere. And if you didn't do it, it's a good time to do it right now. Keep your systems up to date. Subscribe to monitoring services. I'm going to come with example as well with relevant staff. Use a document shredder, and that uh, not many people think about it, but a lot of information gathering come from trash. So, uh, especially in uh, social engineering and uh, attack like these, uh, all the sensitive information that are in trash is cr is crazy amazing. So, you should destroy all the paper documents. I'm gonna speak more about that on the next slide. So, oversharing on social media is a huge security risk. Uh, one of the big one is like on the personal assets, you have a home and you are on social media and you start to share about you're going on vacation. Hey buddy, I'm so happy I'm going to go to Hawaii next two weeks and this is going to be great. And people have been watching your home and they know there is nobody around and they know it's going to be empty for the next two weeks. So it's a neat ideal time to break in. So that you have to think about when you share online. So this one, thieves, watch your activity to schedule break-in. This is what I just say. Scammers use this information for spear phishing. The information you share can be used against you, your family, or friend. While you publish something that is your personal information, like criminal guys can use it against your family. If we know you're on a, in, on a trip in Mexico, we're gonna call your grandparents, your parents, and you know, start up with a scheme stating that you get an accident and you need funding for the medical stuff. I'm going to call on BF and on hospital and they will not see it coming and usually it's going to work. So you have to be careful about that. Insurances are watching individual as well. So we saw that in Quebec like last year, someone has placed a, a claim that uh, he could not work anymore due to an injury and then he's been placing on Facebook that he was doing a jet ski. So that didn't go well, <laughs> got caught and eventually uh, it was bad. So uh, next step is about the passwords, um, using different passwords. Uh, one of the most channel of account takeover is the actual reuse of passwords. As we saw, there are a lot of many password dumps online that we can find and use against your accounts. Most likely your password is already there out on the web and it's not safe. Uh, yep. It already exists on an online database. It has been uh, hacked and uh, it could give access to multiple services. 
So if you use the same password everywhere, then it's going to be easy to take over other accounts on other platform. If you use the same account on Facebook, LinkedIn, obviously the attacker is smart enough to try with your email and uh, is going to attempt to take over more than one account. It's much more easy to change a hacked password in one place only. If you get a notification that your account has been taken over, if you use one password, Per website, you have to change it only in one place. So this is much more easy to manage. If you use a single sign-on, uh, like Facebook is providing that service. I'm not a big fan of Facebook for the privacy reason, but this is an, as an example. If you use that to log in into different services, you have to make sure that you use multi-factor authentication because taking over one account only means that it's gonna be used to take over all your other accounts where the single sign-on has been used. And this is a different management because this is a high value target. Use a password manager. To be honest, I was not a big fan at the beginning, but right now I see that for usability and user adoption, this is a way to go. It makes your life easy. You can store multiple complex pa password that the human brain is not designed to retain and uh, to remember. So I was used to build my complex password out of a chain, but I mean, it's not really usable by, by most of people. So I went on uh, Password Manager as well. Synchronize your vault on all your devices. That's a super cool thing because then you don't have to care. This is on your mobile phone, on your browser. Anywhere you go, you can just unlock your uh, password manager with multi-factor authentication on it, and you can get access to all your passwords. You can save time with this, but you should not enable the autofill option in the browser. When you use autofill option, it means that each time the, the browser or the password manager detects the field on your page, it's gonna attempt to fill it. And there are many vector of attack depending on how the website is done, on how the password manager or uh, the browser is designed that will just trigger the autofill of uh, form by hiding it in an hidden iframe. So basically they do reproduce the URL like something.com slash uh, something.facebook.com slash something. And if the parsing rule in the password manager is not smart enough, it's gonna fall for it and fill your credential into the form and submit it. And then your credential has been stolen and you don't even see it because this is happening in the background. So this is why I don't really like the autofill option. And I don't actually like either saving the password in the browser. Uh, I'd rather have a uh, uh, password manager on the side. Keep track of all the services you've been using. And if you have a password manager, this is cool because you have an entry for each of the services you've been using. So this is good. Now, the key factor is enabling multi-factor authentication. Uh, some user, some people are reluctant to enable it. And this is sad because this is an easy step. Even Microsoft published that this is stopping 99% of the threat. As soon as you enable MFA, your credentials that are still online are no longer usable most of the time, except in advanced phishing, nothing is bulletproof. You have to know that the whole world is trying to guess your password right now. Like everybody from China to India, to Bangladesh, to Europe, they have access to where portal you are logging in. And they can try each of them, everybody, your email and a password. So if they all go together, this is a huge amount of attempt and they will eventually succeed. No MFA, your account will be taken over. Check in your device as soon as you only MFA, use MFA once. That's a point um, when users are actually reluctant to adopt multi-factor authentication because they think that each time they have to log in, they need to enter the MFA. Well, they don't have to most of the time because you can sign, if you use Office 365 and you log in, you, you tick the box, save my device. And the next time you come and you won't have to use the MFA again. So this is not that painful in the end. SMS, uh, that's a hot topic. SMS is unsafe. It's known as a seven attacks on the mobile phone network, but it's better to have SMS than actually no, no MFA on the account. So even if it's not as safe as, it's still better than no MFA. Uh, SMS, USB token authenticator, this is all the MFA that actually are uh, available on the market. 
uh, like the yellow star. So you know that's the key point if you want to protect your account. Have multi-factor authentication. Keep your systems up to date. Critical vulnerabilities allow a hack a takeover of your accounts without interaction. So this is critical to keep your system up to date. Patch management is a key stuff, uh, either personal device or for your business. Smartphone, PC, laptop, routers, everything must be kept up to date. The routers is a critical point that people don't think about, but this is used in many attack, can be used to hijack DNS and send you to wrong sites. So this is something you wanna actually keep up to date as well. Connected equal hacked, uh, that's one of my catchphrases. As soon as you connect something to internet, this is a risk you expose your attack surface and you can be hacked so you have to be careful about what you connect do you really need to connect what you are about to connect the less thing you connect the safer you are keep on the application you use on your phone and on, and on your pc uninstall anything that you don't use that's one of the key factors keep it clean and reduce the attack surface subscribe to monitoring services and i'm spinning it a little bit because uh, we started late and we're going to be a little bit late uh, we're going to see, have I been pound? This is a well-known service. You just put your email there and it's going to tell you each time there is a dump containing your email, you're going to get a notification about the database of that website got breached. And if your email is in it, you get notified and you have to change your password. So this is a good service. Breach alarm, same thing as well. They offer free monitoring for a private email address, same thing. Act notice, this is a different approach. Basically, you subscribe there and uh, you, you pick up the services you use and you get it, you're going to get notification if any of them get breached. So this is good to stay aware of it. Brand yourself. Uh, that's a recommendation from my mentor, thankfully. Uh, it's a nice site that allows you to protect your online brand. Uh, your name, your email, you're going to watch for it, search what people say about it. If it is, uh, has been used, if someone created a fake account with your profile, this is a good thing to add. Search your email on Google and your name. See what's happening right there. If you search your email and you appear in like unusual forum, this is something that can put you on a tail of an account corruption. And obviously, when you use one of these services, I do not recommend to put any password on them because you don't know where it's going to go. If you submit a password for checking, you should not be using it anymore. That's kind of unsafe to ship your password, even to check for security. And a final point on this, close your unused account. If there are services that you don't use, you may consider closing it, at the exception of the social media. Social media is kind of a tricky question. Like I did close my Facebook account due to privacy issues, but now someone could go and create an account under my name. And because I'm not there, I will not see it and could make it like, you know, use my identity and I would not see it. So this is a tricky question. Maybe it would be good to have an account, don't use it, but leave it there and link it rather than not having at all. This is thing for you to assess your position on this one. Alexander? Yes. Don't worry too much about time. You, you will take it right up until I have to start the, the next one, even if it means I don't get to pee. So just take your time and enjoy. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Russian, or, you know. <laughs> yeah, I apologize for that. So that's that's one of the things. Uh, next, um, shred all your documents. As I said in the previous uh, slides, uh, most documents in trash contain sensitive information. And I don't know the legal framework of all the countries and how it works, but to steal an identity here in Quebec, uh, in Montreal, this is kind of easy. The system are catching up, but this is not yet there. So basically to steal an identity, I just need one of your telecom invoice with your name and address on it. I take in the trash, I take it in your mailbox, and then I will go to a library uh, in your area. And I'm gonna subscribe, hopefully you're not subscribed there. And they're gonna register me because I have an invoice with your name and address. And they're gonna issue me a nice little card, which is gonna be an official ID with a picture of it because they take a picture and they don't have any background check. So they don't know if it's me or you, they have no ID. And then I'm you with an actual official ID. And next step to make it short, I go to the police and I place a claim. I have still my invoice and my library card. And I say that I lost my wallet and I lost all my stuff. And I'm got an official deposit of the police record stating that my stuff had been stolen. And then I go for the driver license renewal 
and I will ask for a new license because it has been stolen. I still have my invoice, the police staff, and the library card with a photo ID on it. And that's how you could do it. Right now, in Quebec, uh, they work on having the picture saved in the database. So when you come to the counter, they will identify as not you, but this is not yet there. So that's something you should think about, just a single telecom invoice. So it's important to trash and destroy all your stuff, aside of the thing that you want to archive, but save it I mean, in a safe place. So it's easy to steal your identity. If you store them online, make sure you have MFA on the account you used to store. Use safe, privacy-oriented services. I do like ProtoMail or Tutanota stuff because this is online encrypted stuff. They work and focus a lot on privacy. They cannot access your content. It's all encrypted. You manage the keys. And that's kind of a safe place to save your critical documentation. I mean, if you got a fire in your home and stuff, this is where you want to recover your stuff. And that's kind of a good place to do it. And you should also shred all drives, memory cards, smartphone, and copier. I have a link in the presentation right there. That's a video of YouTube. You will be able to watch it because we will share the presentation. Uh, it's a quite an old one, but still accurate. Like people do not realize that all the multifunction copier in offices, and if you use at home, have an onboard memory. It was hard drive back then. Right now, it's like either flash memory. And you can dump that memory. And most of them do not come with encryption enabled by default. So when company and organization rent these machines and they renew them like each four year and send them back to the renter, they send them with all the history of scan and printing inside. And I suggest you watch that video and it's gonna show you and it's scary how many documents you can find in multifunction copier. So the good thing here is to enable the safe destroy option, depending on the brand, there's a different name, like encrypt storage, etc., to avoid your document to be sold. This is one of the main vector of potential leak. And this was part of uh, foreign um, spying uh, through fake recycling program in China and another country, where they would have an actual fake recycling facilities where the only goal is to dump the data out of the old material, hard drive, PCs, servers, and a copier. So be careful about that because in your confidentiality and information protection, this is something you don't care So that's kind of the end of my stuff. So questions for you if you have, and one thing, do you have an internet cybersecurity mailing list for awareness in your organization? This is something I did put in place when I did start at uh, Adware um, in AppenQuest Group, where I work now. And uh, this is something great, and usually employees like it. I got some good subscription and good feedback because people want awareness. They want to learn how to protect themselves. And if you train your employee to protect themselves, they will better protect your organization as well. So, yeah, that would be it. And I wanted to thank um, Grim for the invitation on the presentation, Chris Foulon, who made the, who made the contact, uh, George Orchill, which is my mentor and helped me to review the presentation, uh, Matt Carpenter, you, <laughs> and uh, my employee at the Wear, who actually allow me to do presentation and speak publicly like this, and this is great. They do support me on that, and I'm thankful for this. Thank you so much, Alexander. I got a lot of good stuff out of there. Stuff that I may actually have to go back and review. Um, love the uh, the social media con. Run into this like probably not a lot of attendees here, but so many people sharing stuff on on social media that is like, are you serious? Like <laughs> yeah. people people are tracking other people simply because they're tweeting everything that they do. Oh yeah. Uh, so. Password, different passwords on each service. Um, I hate to say that's that's not always something that I'm great at. Don't use patterns. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. no, it's a different password. My Facebook password is Facebook one, and my YouTube password is YouTube one. Yeah, it's such a good difference. We would not <laughs> guess it. <laughs> right? No, it's it's YouTube two. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. You know, it, you you brought up single sign-in, and and I and I think about Google and and YouTube or Google and Facebook a lot going. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Because they are the they're the biggest. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to go turn off autofill. Just saying. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 something people don't think about. And this is an attack vector. Like browser, 
I, I don't like to say password in browser at all because that's a bad idea uh, mm -hmm. because your browser can be corrupted. And there is always new pattern of attack that you see and browser, I mean, they get fixed all the time, but there is a new vector, new approach to abuse the forms. I mean, this is as stupid as iframe with JavaScript. You can do so many things, you know, and the, the regex that are used in the password manager to detect the domain and the field, sometimes they are dumb enough that if you put like domain.com slash facebook.com, it would match and fill the stuff anyway. So you just need like, yeah. you see the thing? It's, it's, yep. So they yep. fix it along the way, but there is always new creative approach for the, to do that. So you should actually control what gets filled into the form. So what password manager do you use? Because you know, I would, I would hope that you've done your homework and they would have validated things like well, the facebook.com.craft. I'm, I'm, I like uh, Bitwarden. I like it because it's open source. I'm a Linux guy, I like open source. They have third party audit of the code, so I like it. But I also like the fact that they do allow you to host your own server. And I'm, I'm uh, someone who likes to host the thing on myself. So I do host and, and sync my own server. And the cool thing with that, you can actually review. They are made of uh, Linux based uh, SQL server by Microsoft in the back end. And you can right. dump the table and you see that there is no readable information in the base. Actually, okay. the whole decryption happen at the client side. So this is this is something I do like. I mean, I'm not a forensic guy uh, at, in CTF. I'm not super good at that. But from what I saw from <laughs> Bitwarden, I actually do like it. And the user acceptance is pretty high because it brings all the convenience that user uh, usually expect. Sure. You want to make sure that they don't wrap in some other secret master key so that anybody can see it. I like the fact that it brings its own sync server because that's one of the reasons that I won't use a password manager is because I don't, if it's for one machine, then it's one, it's one machine. And then what do I do? And I don't trust to store it online because I don't trust that nothing is, is going to save some master password. So that's really great. Yeah. Um, I, I love the, uh, the services that you brought up. Um, I really like learning that it's it's still that easy to to create a fake ID in Canada. So thank you for that with the yeah. step by step, including the the pivotal library. That's such an important step. Yeah, they they actually work on that. I mean, this is something coming this year with the the ID photo check. But I mean, this is always about being creative, you know, and uh, finding someone. People are really good at social engineering, they will work around most of the filters. So this is something to keep in mind. If you avoid sharing the document at the base, at the source, this is safer. Okay, I uh, got a question you may field here or offline. Uh, what are your thoughts on better securing BGP for the future? <laughs> I know who's, who's asking that. <laughs> okay, good, because that yeah. seemed a little out in left field. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, that's because BGP protocol, which is the back end of the internet, this is border gateway protocol, right. uh, is not safely encrypted right now. And the routing, I mean, we see that on the threat landscape, like foreign <coughs> countries are actually hijacking network traffic by advertising IP that are not theirs and sending traffic out to dump this traffic and, I mean, steal it and analyze it. So mm -hmm. uh, you got RPKI encryption that is a, a protocol and implementation of BGP that exists and is available, but is not implemented yet. So the security group I work with are really supportive of like zero trust and implementing the security because one obvious stuff is BGP is the back end of internet, like the IP routing. So right. if this is not safe, anything that we can patch on top of it is like just a band-aid, you know, it's not fixing right. the core issue. But this is a deep change, and I'm confident it's going to happen. <laughs> you may upset the NSA. You might want to be careful there. Yeah, uh, yeah. There are obvious <coughs> potential reason why this is not happening yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, the last pass hack of 2015. Thanks, Oz. Um, See, there's a product called OnlyKey, which is open source hardware password manager. It acts as a HID device with a, nim with a number pad on it. Um, let's see, plus one for Bitwarden from Alden. Thank you. Excellent password manager. And what are your thoughts on Ron? Take it <laughs> offline. <laughs> Ron's continuing to troll you. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. 
Alexander, thank you so much for not only a great presentation, but your patience and the humor that we've been able to, to have in light of it. Uh, thank you all for your patience. I'll be uh, checking in the next speaker in about a minute, but thank you. Great job. Thanks a lot.